appreciate that. The markets are still in a steep sell-off. So let's talk to our Fox panel about it, see what's really going on. Fox business contributor Charles Payne. We have Gary Kalpbaum of GaryK.com, Victoria Barrett from Forbes, and Tobin Smith from Change Wave Research, along with Peter Schiff, author of Crash Proof. Uh, Peter, your, your beloved gold is down today, but uh, so are the markets. What do you think's at work here? Well, you know, first of all, gold is up in terms of the stock market. So the Dow is losing more value than gold. And, you know, gold's still in a bull market. Stocks are in a bear market. But, you know, I mean, there's a lot of problems out there. I mean, look, you got the terrible uh, ISI non-manufacturing non number that confirms, again, that we're in a recession. A lot of people are still clinging to the fantasy that we're not in a recession. And you've got a lot of warnings now coming out uh, with the credit card issuers. I've been talking about that for months on this show. There is a huge crisis building in credit card debt. There are tremendous losses there. Credit card companies are really going to be tightening up on their lending standards, cutting back on people's lines of credit. And people are starting to realize what this means for an American consumer-based economy where people only spend if they can borrow. Well, Charles, these numbers from the ISM are bad, but even the chairman of the ISM said you have to see how this trends out before anybody gets too excited. Well, obviously the market got pretty excited, but even the head of the institute that comes out with these numbers is saying, hey folks, caution. Caution. Also, you know what, if you looked at, I looked at the report and one of the things that kind of struck me is and some, with some of the respondents, it seems like they're reacting to the possibility of, of a recession, so therefore they've constricted their activity. In other words, if we're not in a recession, they're bracing for it. And sometimes, if everyone does brace for it, it makes it a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know? And so to Peter's point, uh, yeah, you know, we've seen some the credit cards. Uh, you know, we saw a downgrade of the credit card issues yesterday. But you look at MasterCard. That stock has been performing exceedingly well in this environment. The other guys have increased their loan losses, but not to the catastrophic point that you would see reflected in the stock market right now. Tobin, if, if what Charles says is correct and that it is a bit psychological versus with the real data behind it, do you then suspect that if we were to dip into recession, it would be a very short one? Well, Liz, if you look at sort of compare 2001 to where we are now, what's intriguing is oh one we had the business spending you know drop off a cliff, consumer spending stayed pretty strong, and really obviously housing uh, became the the, the torchbearer, if you will, of spending. Now we're in a completely different place. We have business spending sort of hanging you know flat, maybe a little bit up. We have consumer spending coming down. Part of what you know. Uh, uh, the whole point on credit cards is yes, we are, are having a constriction, a tightening. Uh, we came out today, they, they interviewed uh, 300 different savings and loans and banks and said, Have you tightened your credit uh, restrictions? Almost to a T, they have. So that tightening down changes. Obviously, the housing market's down. So the real savior here would be as if the consumer will pull back, but not too much. That gives us what we're forecasting, which is a negative Q1, a negative Q2, and then obviously the Fed is going to be at probably 2.5% uh, interbank rates uh, in the next 30 to 45 days. That's going to really be the floor of the market. Yeah. Well, right Gary, there. Uh, Gary, does it concern? We just heard from Sandra that there's 100% certainty now, at least by, by yeah. one group of folks, that there's going to be another 50 basis point drop by the Fed in the Fed funds rate. Does it concern you that it would be two and a quarter points down within two months? That's a huge drop. Is there any concern there? Well, look, as you know, I've been telling you that they were going to be very aggressive. I predicted it in intermeeting. I believe they are going to go down to 2%. This is a Fed that has dropped all pretense. They care about inflation. They are looking at the economy. And, and let me just say this. I would like to put a positive spin on it, but that ISM number was really bad. We are going to have a negative growth number in the first quarter, yeah. probably in the second quarter. Whether or not it gets really bad or not, I think yeah. the market will tell us. If the market yeah. goes and breaks the lows we just saw about 11 days ago, that's going to tell you the recession is going to be a little nastier than expected. Now, let me say one other thing. My company's research, we go out and we are touchy-feely and we speak to all kinds of businesses. Business is not very good at the retail level right now. The consumer is definitely pulled back. When I speak to the companies that sell appliances, very bad. We already know about housing, so we are definitely in a downtrend right now. And when we come out, beats the heck out of me. But the Fed is doing everything they can. Not sure it's going to work. We're all going to die. Worse. We're all going to die. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 Victoria, that. wait a minute. I want Victoria's opinion on, on... No, Victoria. Never mind. No, the Fed's going to make it worse. <laughs> the Forget Fed's going to make it worse, They're Peter. I mean, more. The, but, but you look at what's happening right now, and there are a lot of people who say a couple of pieces of weak data. Here come the stimulus. What do you think that might do? 
Well, look, the stimulus is, is going to make it worse. All they're going to do is run bigger budget deficits. We're going to borrow more money uh, to send it out to Americans and hope they, go, they irresponsibly spend it with all the money they've already irresponsibly spent. I mean, we cannot get out of this mess by doing more of what got us into it. Unfortunately, we've got to tough out a recession. It's going to be a doozy, but we've got to stop all this spending. We've got to stop all this borrowing. We've got to start but producing Peter, and Peter, exporting and saving. Peter, Peter go you, ahead, contra Gary. you contradict yourself. First, you say the economy economy's going into the crapper, it is. but don't lower rates. You say let's raise rates, which right. makes absolutely no sense. No, no, I, it does I, make I, sense. I agree, I agree you, with you on the inflation front, but the Fed is in a box right now. They have to make a decision, and they got to weigh inflation versus no, economy, no, and the economy's is, got some no, problems here. There is no trade-off between growth and inflation. Real economic growth causes prices to fall. What makes prices go up is artificially low interest rates and excess money printing. That's what the Fed is doing. Yes, the Fed needs to be raising interest rates and yes we're gonna have one hell of a recession but there's nothing we can hey, do gang, about it before we before we get this, entirely negative on this I just want to point out one thing that was also in this very same ISM report they asked respondents how they felt about the next 12 months in response 42 percent said it, they were it would be worse 42 percent said the same and 16 percent said better now Toby that means 58 percent of the respondents said sometime within the next 12 sure. months things are gonna get better well, I, I, listen, I, I, another perspective on this, but this happens to be a fact. In 01, Greenspan waited to cut rates till 03. I mean, they were way, way behind the Bingo. curve here. Here, here we had the, the Fed cutting rates four months before we got to a negative rate. So they are probably two years ahead of where we were in 01. And that's why, irrespective of Mr. Schiff's idea of whether we should be cutting or lowering, they're going to be cutting. And that's that those low rates will be coming at the same time. We're in a refinancing uh, mode. So you can make a, a strong case that they were there early and they were there strong and that they will yeah. put a floor under the okay, market around the 11,500. We're going to wrap at, this discussion some... for just a moment. Okay, now we're down just 258 points. <laughs> a little recovery. It was worse. Many investors more interested in Yahoo's future plans than their current earnings. Now, Microsoft wants to buy the web portal, while Google is hoping to team up with Yahoo. And now there is word Microsoft is going to kind of cozy up to regulators in an effort to win out the same federal officials the software firm has been battling for years. Our Fox panel is back now to talk about it. So, Toby, do we take this newfound love for regulators by Microsoft seriously? <laughs> no, but I mean, look at that. What, what else can they do? This is a company that is been vilified by the regulators, been vilified by the European uh, groups, and uh, they are finally sort of coming back, whimpering, sort of. <laughs> now listen. Please, we got this big uh, company, uh, Google, that's been eating our lunch. We're not that bad. Please, we're not that bad. And in the back, you know, their, their fingers are like this behind the back of their yeah. neck. Um, you know, they, they really need to go through a regulatory process here where they're not the bad guy. This is like the beginning shot. Um, but they've got to soften their uh, position with these regulators or they're not going to get the Yahoo deal done. Okay, Charles, what do you think? I, I mean, this, is, this certainly makes things so much fun to watch, doesn't it? It really does, and I don't even think the U.S. regulators are going to be the problem. It's the European regulators. Yeah. They really hate Microsoft, particularly when Mario Monti was in charge over there. Oh, even no. though he's gone, it's still, there's so much animosity, and, and just, you know, it's just hard to fathom. And, and you know, the, the irony, of course, is that Microsoft, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, that, that uh, Microsoft, rather, went to the regulators about the Google double-click deal, you know, trying to slow down a little bit. So a lot of this is politics, trying to gum up the works on both sides. I think at the end of the day, though, the deal is going to go through. Peter, uh, Milton Friedman used to say that, that corporations uh, love the free market as long as it applies to somebody else and not to them. Is this just an example of that? Well, you know, you know these antitrust legislation, you know, all, they've done so much more harm than good with this. I mean, it, I'm not worried about monopolies. I, I think the government ought to stay out of this. I think the free market gives us much better protection. Uh, you know, and it's unfortunate that, you know, the government was involved with Microsoft before. And now they're, you know, involved here. They should just stay out of it. They should let the market work. Uh, you know, from an investment point of view, though, I think all three of these stocks, you know, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Google should all be sold because there are going to be a lot of problems. I think stocks like Google have been priced to perfection. Obviously, Microsoft is going to up the ante okay. and try to battle them. Uh, this is not going to be good for these companies' earnings in the short run. These stocks okay. are going down. Gary Kalpom, yeah. I see you sort of grimacing a bit there. What do you think? 
Oh, I just don't know about this. They should sell themselves. I mean, they're a business no, and they no, make a lot of money. No, no, I think you meant you should sell stocks, right, Peter? If you own, yeah, if, if you're you a shareholder, sell it, if you okay, own these stocks, you, you know, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Okay, right, look, Gary. as far as Microsoft goes, there, there, there's a credo in corporate America. When you need the regulators, kiss took us. And that's what's going on here right now. Uh, I, I think Microsoft is going to do exactly what they need to do. They're going to get their attorneys. They're going to meet with the regulators in Europe and in America to try and get this deal done. But i got to tell you, at the end of the day, I don't think... I think Yahoo wants this. I think Google is the interloper in this, is going to do everything possible yeah. to make sure it doesn't get done. And I don't think you're ever going to see a Microsoft Yahoo deal. The m other main factor is the cultures are totally opposite. They are so different from each other. I think it's a far shot before this one gets done. Yeah, but Toby, how can they stop it unless they come out with a better share offer? I'm still going on the kiss that took us. Yeah, I, I knew you'd get stuck on that one. Move on, Toby. Move on. I'm a funny guy. Well, well, well you know, Gary makes a great point about the cultures. You know, I've been at both companies. I've, I've known you know executives on both sides. Oh my gosh, you could not have a, a more different sort of approach. To just how we do business and how we approach marketplaces. Um, you know, if they don't get it done, and, and, and the point is the Europeans will get over themselves because they have other fish to fry with uh, SAP and other things they'd like to see happen. So I think you're. Europeans will take care of themselves. But the real issue here is if we were to stop this, if there was to be a U.S. blockage on this, then I think it brings the market down even more because that takes out some of the other big deals that are out there. They've been talking about this deal for nine months, maybe 12 okay. months. I, if I had a nickel for every time I heard this you know, thing was coming, you know, I wouldn't be doing this but show. But Charles, you know, Warren Buffett is famous for saying that, that, that all of the exciting synergies that two behemoths often see when they merge rarely come to fruition. Yeah, you know, Microsoft talks about the synergy almost as an afterthought. They say, yeah, we'll save a billion dollars. The reality is, if you can't grow the top line with the merged companies, then they'll do the deal. But to carry Gary Kay's point, you know what, cultures aside, I think Yahoo has to do this. Yeah, you know what, Tobin, everyone saw this deal coming yet the stock was up 60%. No one was long it before it happened because Yahoo was sinking like a rock. And if the guys at Yahoo think they can handle this on their own without any help, they're crazy. The stock yeah, was near a four-year low. They're laying off people. They need this. Last Culture word to enough. Charles. Well, some major media... How much nerve do the airlines have? Or, or are they smart to be trying to squeeze revenue out of every single customer? Well, the latest numbers show they were late more than 25% of the time last year, and yet some of them want to charge you more, squeezing pennies out of you. Yeah, by the way, it's the second worst on-time rating ever. United says it's going to charge you 50 bucks round trip to check in a second bag, $200 for a third bag. How do they justify this? Terry Tripler, founder and CEO of TerryTriplerTravel.com, is here now to talk about it. Terry, good to see you. Uh, now, good when we with you. when we look at the price of oil, of course, it's down today, but gas prices have gone up. Jet fuel has gone up. This must be the reason why. No. Absolutely. It's a, it's the cost of doing business, and the, the jet fuel is absolutely killing the airlines. They're doing whatever they, they every penny of revenue they can find, they're going after it. Short, I'm afraid short, this is just of raising, the short of raising the prices for a ticket, right? Absolutely. Other than raising the price, they're looking for every way that they can tap, tap, tap in and get an extra nickel, and they need it, and they're going for it. Terry, what's wrong with that? I mean, uh, we seem to be a little outraged, but... Uh, isn't that just smart business to try and figure out ways to get more revenue, get more money out of people? You know, absolutely. I look at it sort of as business 101. You know, this is the only industry where somebody paying $1,200 and somebody paying $200 received the same number of amenities or the amount of amenities to service. Now, the person paying 1200 is probably on a, a refundable ticket. They get two bags. The person paying 200 probably a non-refundable ticket. They pay for the second bag. Really, that's how business operates. And I guess if you can charge for food, you can charge for a bag, right? Absolutely. And, and I think that, you know, I think we, by the time we wish each other happy holidays, everybody's going to be in the same boat charging for that second bag. Well, wait a minute. I don't know if that's a fair comparison because, you know, people can bring their own food, but now we're being told you can't bring on that second bag. And, oh, by the way, I want people to know that, that car seats and strollers do not count as a second bag. So at least they're not slamming new, new beleaguered parents, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. And you know what, where the problem is going to lie now is on the carry on. Uh, how many people are going to try to carry on oh, bigger bags yes, now? Yes. That's and true. then what we're going to have happening is when we get to the, when, when the people get to the departure gate and now they're told that's too large to carry on, are they now going to charge that person $25? Uh, there's, there's a lot of logistics here that have to be worked out before this thing can really operate smoothly. Now, Terry, can't you strap it on top? No, I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it, there were some solutions, or I put in quote marks, solutions, and one being to, to enlarge those, those containers on top of the seats that we're in. Is that, is that out the window, so to speak, right now? Well, it could possibly help, but boy, I tell you that they're really carrying on everything but the kitchen sink now, and so this will just make it more difficult. Now, United claims that one out of four check two bags, so that means three-fourths of the people don't. Therefore, if it does cut down on the bags, everybody's going to benefit. They're going to be loading bags faster, unloading them faster. That's going to help, Hopefully. but I okay. am concerned about the carry-on. Stay, uh, stay with us, Jerry. We're going to bring in our panel because uh, some of them are very hot and bothered about this. <laughs> Gary Kay, uh, is this yet another way that the airlines are making people People feel so awful when they when they travel or is this smart business uh, I think it's silly business and I actually think they're imbeciles you know part of corporate America <laughs> is public relations and I think they've already had bad public relations let's just add more fuel to the fire look I understand oil prices are very high and it hurts and I understand that baggage carries weight which uh, uses more gas but there should have been a different way to do this if it were me I sit down at, with the airlines and say charge an extra buck to a ticket this is too loud and too noisy and is gonna make all the passengers upset the, unfortunately the rest of the airlines are going to now follow as they always do. Well, Toby, it won't make all the passengers upset, those, just those with a, a couple of extra bags. Well, look, I just, I just flew back from the Super Bowl on Monday, and the amount of baggage that the, the, the passengers brought in into the plane was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. so true. They have to come up with a, you know, a better system than basically you know, every airline does it different. But forget about this. If you're going to raise the prices, then you've got to guarantee me that I don't have to wait an hour to get my baggage like I did yesterday at U.S. Air. Can I say U.S. Air? U.S. Air. <laughs> an hour, because, you know, after August 15th of two years ago where we had the, you know, Seven planes uh, theoretically loaded with bombs, etc. Everybody checks on more stuff because you can't carry on your, you know, your various uh, tubes and, and stuff, and that goes into your check-on bags. So at the same time that we're putting more stuff to check on, they never added more people. They never uh, added new RFID technology so they could avoid all the problems they have. All they want to do is raise the prices and not improve the technology. And I say, forget. Well, it. Toby, why do you have to bring your rocket launchers with you? I don't understand. Just leave them, uh, leave them at home. Well, yeah, I mean, this was this. Uh, what happened? was we've changed the rules if you ask anybody in the luggage uh, carry because I was there for an hour so I got to talk to everybody uh, they said that checked on luggage now is about 20 percent higher today oh. after uh, August 15th of two years ago yeah and you know you know people maybe the message is stop schlepping I mean Charles you look at <laughs> what, what he's talking about where everybody stuffs their luggage in above and then the last group of people get on the plane everything's taken right. off and besides I mean the, the airlines don't want to go under the problem is they're the only game in town to fly people around so there's some sort of belief on behalf of uh, the average person out there that you owe us this service. Well, there definitely has to be a happy medium. I think to Gary Kay's point, 25 bucks is too much. To Tobin's point, obviously we do need to cut this back. I know when I spend extra money for a business or first class seat, I hate to see people taking my space you know, because they don't deserve it. But let me tell you what I'm really worried about, the trend, the direction they're going in, because soon they're going to start charging for weight, and I'm going to be paying more than everybody on the <laughs> seat. So I'm going to laugh about that. <laughs> Peter Schiff, go ahead, weigh in on this. Well, I, there's, there's two, two key points here. One is the government loves it when they, when they put the price increases through extra fees for baggage because it doesn't make it into the CPI, you know, when they talk about airline fares. So if they, oh, they it's charge a conspiracy. More for, but, yeah, yeah. But also, you know, going forward, look, the airline industry is going to go through a major consolidation over the next five years. You're going to see a lot of mergers, some bankruptcies. There's going to be far fewer planes flying, far fewer Americans in those planes, and ticket prices are going to go way up. There's no Everybody's way around going that. bankrupt. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but we're going to have a much lower standard of living in Look, this country. Americans are not going to be flying as much, and it's going to the cost them a lot more when they want to do it. 
there's no way around the, that. The problem for the airlines here is they yeah. just changed the norm. People, uh, people's expectations were that when you go on and you have a couple of bags, you're not going to be charged. Now you're going to be charged. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a backlash here for changing the norm but and not getting any extra the value line whatsoever. Is, these airlines aren't making any money, and they've got to make money. They're not going to do that unless they get a, a lot leaner. Year. Okay, wait, hold on. If service was better, they would make money, Peter. There's no, no one has sympathy for the airlines because the service is abysmal and they do mistreat it is. the passengers. It's lousy. I mean, I think American Air Service is the worst in the world. I mean, if you fly coach in Asia, you get a better <laughs> meal than first class in the United States. And sometimes I flow. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 gang, gang. I flew on Russian airline once. It was sta I <laughs> you not, it was standing only, oh, yeah. standing yeah. only. Yeah, they had overbooked and they actually had <laughs> things that you had to hold on to. So it could be worse, Peter. I don't David, know. I took. I took. Was, a, David, I took that a was commuter flight in Thailand. <laughs> like I took a commuter flight in Peter, Thailand Peter, okay, for wait, one you guys, hour. Stop for a second, Terry. Terry Triple, you've been listening to to everybody blow about all of this. Um, do, have you learned anything from the way people feel? I mean, there's a lot of passion here. Well, there really is. A lot of people are very upset about it. And, you know, I look at it this way. Forty years ago, when I got in the business, uh, compared to today, today an airline is trying to convince you to fly that airline. Forty years ago, we were trying to convince people to fly. The airlines went overboard in trying to get people, get passengers or whatever. And now as they start to cut back, uh, it really hurts. Okay. What right. the airlines have never learned to do is sell up. Okay. They're the only industry there. I've ever seen that won't sell up. Terry they just Tripler, take we got to leave it because you. we just want to alert the viewers to what's happening in the market. World. So as the stimulus package moves through Congress, lawmakers are now trying to load it up with more spending. Including money for things that aren't necessarily stimulus involved, like home heating assistance and additional unemployment benefits. Has the legislation become a stealth bill for new entitlements? Our Fox panel back now to discuss it. Gary Kay, home heating is now getting involved in this. I mean... Listen, nobody's against w warming up people who are cold, but now this is part of the stimulus package? How does that stimulate? Well, I also need a driver for my golf bag and a uh, box of Twinkies. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I, I've been saying all along, I really think this is nonsense. It's going to add maybe a half a point, maybe 1% to GDP in a quarter going forward. It is going to do nothing to help the economy and change the behavior of consumers. You have to let us go through whatever this downturn. It's going to take time. And i got to tell you, this it, it's almost like we are in an entitlement state. It's like the nanny state, give, give, give. And I only have one question. What do you tell the couple that made $150,001 last year. Oh, you made too much. You're not getting any of this. It just makes no sense, and I just don't like anything well, about or, it. Or, Toby, what do you tell the, the veteran who's come back from Afghanistan, and suddenly one, one congressman or senator proposes putting, putting veterans benefit in the, in the bill, and, and you tell the veteran, gee, I'm sorry, this is a stimulus package. You can't have it. Well, I mean, it's a very difficult point to make here, but, you know, you got to separate what we should do or not do for our veterans from economic but stimulus. But they're not, and, and they're not the, doing it. That's the point. I, in Washington, they're I, combining it all together. Well, I understand it, which, which, which mutes your whole issue of is this a stealth appropriations bill? Of course it's an appropriations yeah. bill. You know, of course they've, they've, you know, they've tried to meddle with this thing. And, you know, what, what scares me is that, we really have started to start to say that the, uh, we can solve all our economic problems by either a dropping you know uh, visa cards from the sky or b having the uh, Fed you know make this market completely dependent on on whether I bet the Fed goes to two and a half or two percent. Well, we got to look at the fundamentals right now, and right now the fundamentals aren't strong. Let the market come back the way it should. We'll be fine. We got to get over ourselves. Well, on can this. I can I just say something though? I mean, uh, totally contradictory to what what Tobin's yeah. saying, Charles. But, I mean, he talks about dropping you know, Visa cards or debit cards from the sky, but the markets rallied 6.5% in the last 10 days of January, ostensibly on the idea of this stimulus package helping retailers and some of the other right. big I, Well, I think it was more so the Fed, that sure, perhaps yeah. the Fed got back in front of the curve. I, you know, I, I, in this right. I, regard, I do kind of agree with Peter that Americans have a soft underbelly when it comes to taking pain, and, you know, we have to sort of sometimes go through recessions. I don't think it has to be a deep recession, but the real problem here is you've already promised this money to people. Mm -hmm. You know, when I promised my son money for his allowance, he reminds me of that. You know, I don't care if it's <laughs> a nickel day. or a dollar. Now, right now, what we've got going on is a legislative version of dueling banjos, and hopefully, you know what, it won't end up being a disaster because people are already spending the money.
Peter, that's that's the point, is that it's an election year and the politicians are throwing everything in this. It's it's very difficult to pull these entitlements as they become out of a so-called yeah, stimulus yeah. bill. Well, you hit the nail on the head. This is not stimulus. This is let's sacrifice the country so we can reelect the incumbents. I mean, it's, you know, throwing gasoline on the fire. If you understand our problems, our, our underlying problems are the result of too much borrowing and too much spending. And this stimulus package is about the government borrowing a bunch of money, writing checks to people and hoping they take it to a department store and blow the money. This is going to create a d deeper problem. Unfortunately, it's not going to stop the recession. We're probably going to have another stimulus package closer to the election okay. when this one doesn't work. And it's going to yeah. be a disaster. Gary Kelpom, uh, the market's down now 328 points. Are you worried right now or are you thinking this is just one bad day? Well, look, we topped out months ago. It just seems like we're just in a bear market for stocks, and the rally we just had was because we dropped about 2,600 Dow points. The market, for me, is really speaking loud and clear about eco the economy, and now we're starting to see the numbers come in. And, and once again, there is no way to paint over or gloss over that ISM number, the jobs number, which is going the wrong way also right now. All right. Well, as yep. Gary said it, the economy is the story. A major concern as voters go to the polls today. All right. Well, if you're going to Disney World, you need a credit card. And credit cards, the next sector of the financial industry to get crunched. Some companies are now being very picky about just whom they give cards to. But seriously, how long will that last? Is this just a few months in the making and then they'll end it and start getting very liberal about it? Is Our Tony asleep? <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to his computer rooster. I was. <laughs> Our Fox panel back now to talk about it. All right, we'll keep you awake, Toby. Uh, you know, what do you think about this credit card story? Front page of the New York Times, people aren't charging anymore, credit cards aren't lending. Do you think that well, uh, this will last a long yeah. time? Yeah, we've been talking about it for the last month and a half or so. In our, we call the super spender uh, survey group that we follow very closely. Uh, in the last part of December, first part of January, we saw a very steep reduction in both intent to buy, meaning that uh, how much they were going to spend, and almost also their savings rate coming up. When you couple that with the fact that you have a lot of the uh, the credit card um, uh, people that uh, that have had foreclosures and et cetera, so their credit's already ruined. Why the hell are you paying your credit card if you're you know if you're if you're going through a house foreclosure or a credit line foreclosure, your credit's ruined anyway, and you're seeing some of those people pull back, particularly in California and Florida. The trend that we've been following is that we should see a record year this year for credit card default. If we have that, as we forecast, it's going to be, um, you're going to have more uh, failures. And by the way, Charlie, MasterCard, the company, doesn't have any credit exposure. They're just the uh, issuer, so they don't have credit exposure. That's why that stock's done so well. It has done very well. <laughs> also, it's done well because of the uh, Asians and, and other foreigners. And sure. you know what's interesting? Uh, you know, and I'm, maybe I'm getting off track here a little bit, but it's in people's nature to spend money that they don't have. And it's not just a U.S. phenomenon, Peter Schiff. It's all over the world, yeah. which is one of the reasons Mastercard's earnings have done, done so well. But there's no doubt the that money people the are the retrenching. There's absolutely no doubt people are retrenching. Even people who have a job who aren't losing their homes because they're afraid that every time they turn on the news, that's all they hear but, about but is doom and gloom. Peter actually has some personal evidence that that the credit cards are clamping down on lending, right? Yeah, I'll give you my own story from last week. And remember, you know, there is a subprime type crisis brewing in securitized credit card bonds. But last week, I have an Amex card uh, that I use for my employees. And last week, American Express, without notifying me, reduced my limit by 85%. And we went to make a charge and it got declined. And basically, do you, do you I have- always pay off? Do you always I, pay I off? Have, I have no balance on my card. I have paid it in full. Every month for over five years, I have an unblemished credit in my business and personally, I don't did have any debt. What did they say? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't have any debt. I have no mortgage. I have no car loans. They basically said that because I was in an industry that was high risk, they were reducing yeah. my credit line to limit their exposure. So they're starting to they factor in. They also found in out you were short the stock, too. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the problem is, these com a lot of Americans, even those that are paying their credit cards on time, you know, they think they have their credit card in case you know, they lose their job. They don't have any savings. People think they're going to be able to rely on their credit cards. They're not. Gary, People are going to have Gary, their re limits reduced. Peter pay on time, but he pays in solid gold. <laughs> gold, right. Yeah. <laughs>
Go figure. He actually sends yeah, the physical gold bar into the in the mail. You, Look, got, you, yeah. you, you guys are missing the significance of what's going on. I mean, when people are going to have their credit limits reduced significantly, they can't use their charge cards anymore. People Look, are going to find that they don't on. have that li life line. Toby, you were agreeing. Look, have you heard of this uh, anecdotal evidence that financial companies are having trouble getting their limits well, to stay? Well, we're, we're surveying. A, a, we surveyed a group of people last week in our, our group, about, about 11,000 people, and asked, are you getting credit card reduction? Are you getting tighter uh, numbers? And again, this is the higher end, over $100,000 household. Um, and as a general rule, the answer is no. But the, the specific issue is, is that um, taking sort of the business risk and the other parts of it, where you're seeing a clampdown is on new credit and credit extension. People get every year don't realize that they get their account reviewed. And if you have, you know, uh, have multiple credit cards going at the same time and have multiple balances, then they change the way they rate you and you will get contraction yeah. Gary, credit card. I, 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 only no, Gary, I only have three Hold credit cards. I only have three credit cards. All I know Hold is on, that Gary, since, ja since January of 05, I have tallied the number of applications I've received in the mail, 746, yeah. <laughs> including my two kids. I'm still waiting for my fish to get an application in the mail from these people. Uh, you know, I think that they're, they're not going to uh, walk the walk. They may be talking that they're no. going to lower the yeah, applications. Is all is they stop credit, off of this. They guys, live off the fees. They live off the interest. And I think right they're not going to uh, okay. slow things down going there forward. There is a credit crunch going on right now, and a lot of it is well-deserved. I mean, and certainly in terms of the mortgages, you right. don't want people who can't afford to pay off mortgages getting mortgages. The same is true with credit cards. Yes. Well, the same you know, the is true, some of it is rational. By, by the same token, though, this is some, some business models, though. You know, if you're Capital yeah. One, it is your business model to keep sending these out. And I'm sure uh, right. that 700 some out that Gary K. got probably have came from Capital yeah, One. But so you know, the, the bottom line... Certain people, you can't just change your business model overnight yeah. and say we're a credit yeah. card company, but we're not going to say credit cards. The, 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 bo the bottom line is the people who have been supplying all the credit, who have been buying all these securitized bonds are going to get burned. Americans simply can't pay back the trillions that we've borrowed on these credit cards. We don't have the income. Oh, we don't have the money. And the assets aren't there. And so once the people who have been lending the money realize that this is a bad business, they're not going to want the exposure ahead, anymore. Toby. They're going to cut back. Toby, go ahead. Peter. Look at look at uh, the credit card industry is built on a default rate uh, number. The reason why they have an 18 Yeah, but it's going to go up. Way yeah. up. Thank the you, default Peter. Rate's my, go way up. my turn. My turn. Take a breath. Um, the bigger issue here is that their business is built to have delinquencies. That's how the credit card industry works. They rate uh, credit all the time. The same argument, Peter, you, you're using today, you could have made five years ago, no, no, 10 years I, ago, 15 years ago. I, I believe look, me, I've heard you do it for 15 years. No, okay? no, you haven't heard, heard me do now, it for the issue Tobin, is, hold let on. me finish, guys, Peter. Let this me is finish. the same what? issue that I made with subprime, and you guys laughed it off. You couldn't see the subprime crisis coming Sub, when it was right in front of your face. Com, it's the, no, no, a completely but remember, different business. Yeah. Yeah, but no, okay, but you were saying the, the exact word, same thing. You were, were laughing at me when I predicted the second time. You the can't markets. see this. It is Zip down 320. <laughs> Stay tuned. Much more ahead. Moments to go until the close, six minutes away, and the Dow is losing air very quickly, down about 353 points at the moment. A lot of troubles with the bond insurers, not to mention the financials. Tough day on Wall Street. You know, uh, a lot of downgrading going on and suspicion that more will come as, as a lot of different financials are finding out that their financial records are not as well kept as they thought. Sally May, of course, uh, they're the ones that back up a lot of those student loans. Uh, they have been downgraded by S&P to just one step above junk bond status. Their stock, it's getting hit like uh, most stock. It's down about 4.8, about 5% today. Uh, most of the uh, stocks are down today on a day when the stock's been hit all across the board. But again, these downgrades of financial institutions are hurting the market bad. Yeah, you know, Fitch may cut a CIFG's AAA insurer financial strength rating. Uh, of course, AMBAC and MBIA have been really on the hot seat. And uh, now Warren Buffett telling Fox Business, I'm not helping them. I've got my own bond assurance mm. company that's going to do just fine in this atmosphere, which is a very tough one. So let's throw it out to our Fox panel as the Dow is down 357 points. Tobin, what is at work here? 
Well, you know, it, it was we talked about since uh, basically January. We're in a bear market, and you have to change your perspective. We talked about the idea that you sell into these real sharp V-shaped rallies, just like we had, you know, basically over the last 10 days. That's when you lighten up. You expect to come right to the top of the, uh, you know, technical support. When the fundamentals are cloudy, you got to go on the technicals. The technicals, right when we got to 12,800, boy, everything ran out of steam, and we've jumped right back. Again, you expect in a bear market to have sharp up rallies and sort of slow and low and low and lower until we get sold out. We're not near that yet. You know, it feels great to be in cash. We're going to be buying. The world's not coming to an end, but the world is certainly going to need to price in more uh, problems in the financial yeah. world and in earnings than just we are now. But Charles, it's important to look at the numbers. Obviously, technicals are important, but specifics of what is happening with companies. What Liz found out today about a lot of these bond insurers and about how their status may be lowered. We just found out that Sally May is lost a, a grading one of its rate, rating has gone down to just above junk bond status this right. is Sally May right. I mean these specifics are hurting the market right now as well well they're definitely not helping uh, and of course one of the things that helped last week was the tough talk uh, from AMBAC saying you know what we're going to keep our rating and they seemed pretty co confident last week that stock made a miraculous rebound you know last Monday I recommended IndyMac we sold it on Tuesday because the move yeah. it was just outrageous it went up 40 percent in two days so yeah. to Tobin's point some people are trying to buy the bottoms and trade the market, but there's not a lot of money committed because there are so many unanswered questions out there. Well, Peter Schiff, um, gold, your favorite, is down about 17 bucks today. But as you look at the overall market and, and try to explain to the average investor, the average uh, viewer who might not really understand what's at work here, what to do in a time like this, aside from your usual buy gold, etc.? Well, I mean, you got to sell. The market's going lower, and you know, Do gold you sell is down into half. a fall like this, though. Yeah, well, it's going to be lower. I mean, it would have been better to sell yesterday, but there's so many problems coming for this economy. Look, let me get back to this thing on these credit cards. People don't appreciate this, but you know, the problem with subprime. The reason the thing blew up was because they assumed very low default rates, and as long as the defaults were low, everything was fine. The minute the defaults were higher than their computer model suggested, it blew up. That's how the credit card industry works. They assume a certain default rate. They are way low on that defaults are going to be much bigger than they imagine and the whole industry is going to blow up and the economy is a mess and people have to understand that and understand that it's not just stocks going down it's the dollar going down it's up today but it's going to go down a lot over time and it's not just selling stocks it's selling dollars there is no safety in a money market account or a government bond People need to look abroad. They need to buy gold. They need to buy foreign currencies. I like the Swiss franc. I Peter, like the Singapore dollar. You can buy foreign markets, but you've got to get out. Go ahead, Gary. Peter, I, I think it's wrong of you yeah. on national TV to say that money markets are not safe they're as, not as safe. a generalization. Because they're dollars. Because, Pete, you're going to scare the living, you're, you're gonna scare the living heck out of people here. Most they money markets scared. are Let me finish, Peter. Most money markets are safe, but you should just tell individuals to check for themselves. No, look, I'm look, talking about the safety Peter, of the purchasing power. In Peter, Inflation go ahead, is Gary. rising. Peter, hold okay, on, Peter. Gary has the floor. Look, uh, what we have going on here is a market that is now reacting to recessionary numbers, a move down. I just want to make sure every investor knows we've been through this before. Bear markets Absolutely. happen. Like this one. Economies, oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, take a Valium for a change. Yeah. No, anyway, and, and, we're, and, and we are going to get through drink, this. The, uh, the power drink. To yeah, look, get we're going to get through this. It's just got to run its course for a while. I have no idea what price or when. But I just want to finish up because I wasn't on yesterday. Eli Manning for president. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. It's a great week for the call bombs. Uh, indeed. It was a superb game. But, you know, Charles, you, you mentioned that you made a call. A stock went up 40 percent, and then you sold it right away because you said yeah. this, this is really dramatic. Um, what is behind you when you do these types of things as we get about 20 seconds away from the closing I base everything on fundamentals, and then when they get too ugly, you know, sometimes we just kind of roll the dice, which we did last week. With that and home builders, it worked out very well. But uh, 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 Tobin's point, we have been in a lot of cash recently. And, I'm excited about the market. Uh, well, you mentioned the word ugly, and that is what the market is.